If you've been around my channel for a while, then you might remember that I tried to print with nylon and it broke my printer pretty good. Um, you might also remember that I tried to make some relatively quiet gears. About sneaking up on you, it's, it's totally stealthy. And they were definitely, definitely loud. loud. And you might remember that I made a planetary gearbox for Nephilim's pelvis. Well, since the making those videos, I've made several upgrades to my 3D printer. I created a dry box for holding my nylon filament. Uh, I played with the design of the planetary gearbox to make it smaller and more practical for the application in question. I'm Josh Whitman, CEO of Whitman Technological. My 3D printer is a seven-year-old kit that I paid $350 for. Um, the hot end had plastic components in it and it had a Teflon tube inside. So I have since replaced that heatsink with a metal heatsink. I got a metal heat break and then a new hot end which I insulated with some just pink house insulation. And with this new all metal hot end setup, I'm able to print at 270 Celsius. I bought a weathertight plastic box at Staples and I drilled a couple holes into it. Two holes. Okay, fingers crossed. Hey, that's, that's really good. And I put some tubing into those holes. Snap it. So I threw some packets of silica gel in the bottom of it. I don't have a whole bunch of cool beads. All I have are these packets. And while I was making this, I threw my nylon into my toaster oven and let that cook for four or five hours. The nylon now stays inside its own dry box and it feeds directly into the top of the enclosure for my 3D printer. I uh, did a few passes at calibrating the extrusion rates of the nylon so that I was getting really high fidelity. I redesigned the planetary gearbox to be as small as possible and then I started to print the parts for that and when I saw how tiny they were, I was like, okay, this is just ridiculously small. So at that point, I uh, looked at the actual size of the motor and tried to match roughly the size of the motor with the size of the gearbox.
So I printed out all the parts and I assembled the gearbox and I stuck a motor on the end of it and then hooked it up to a cordless drill and I spun the gearbox and I couldn't hear the gears at all over the sound of the cordless drill, which was really cool. So then I was feeling pretty brave and I connected the motor for the planetary gear set to a 12 volt power supply. And now the, the cordless drill, maybe that runs at like 300 RPM or something. Uh, but this motor runs at 7,000 RPM. So I'll let you have a listen to this little gearbox here. And uh, I think you're going to agree that printing gears in nylon is a tremendous improvement. Uh, also, it's a huge improvement to strength. This nylon is basically indestructible. So here, let me let me fire them up for you. So here it is, and it is moving pretty fast, and it's it's definitely loud, but uh, it's not as loud as the other one. For the other one, I am gonna put some earplugs in because that is uh, really so loud it's like it will damage my hearing so we'll... there we go okay very very loud and scary Yeah, so you heard it. It's very loud. Oh, yeah. So very scary. The ABS ones, really scary. Uh, super duper loud. The nylon ones, I can tolerate without earplugs. It's noisy, but it is not anywhere near the order of magnitude of noisy as the ABS gears. I hope you enjoyed the video. I got some more fun stuff on the way. Uh, kind of. It depends on your definition of fun. In any case, thanks for sticking around. I'm Josh Whitman with Whitman Technological. I love science, and I hope you do too.